Hi everyone, welcome to Bayview Kids Online. We're so happy to see you this week. We have some worship and an exciting Bible story coming right up. But before we begin, we want to invite you and your parents to learn more about Bayview Glen Church through our website, bayviewglen.org kids. We have in-person Bayview Kids services every Sunday and family events throughout the year. We'd love to have you join us. All right, let's get ready to worship and learn more about God together. Everybody, everywhere, needs a friend who is always there. Jesus, you are the one, cause you showed me that you always care. Trust in you. I'm running free because of who you are. You're light in me. It's shining like a star. I will never be the same. You're always in my heart. I'm running free because of who you are. I'm running free. I'm going God's way. He's changing me. I'm going God's way. 
have never ever left my side, my side, girl. You know what's best. Your ways are better than the rest, the rest. Oh, oh you've seen me through. Oh, I'll trust in you. I'm running free. Because of who you are, you're lighting me. It's shining like a star. I will never be the same. You're always in my heart. I'm running free. Because of who you are, I'm running free. I'm going God's way. He's changing me. I'm going God's way. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Holly and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. I'm Jayla. Today is a very cool day. Do you want to know why? Because today I'm going to be doing an awesome science experiment. Do you want to do it with me? Great. These are the directions. They tell us exactly what to do. Let's see what they say. The directions say we need a plate. Check. Next we need some water. Next, we need some pepper. <laughs> the last thing it says we need is blue soap, but I don't have any. But I do have blue paint. My dad is at the store getting blue soap. Should I wait for him and use the blue soap, or should I use the blue paint? Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Jayla. Who? Who? Doing a fun experiment, are you? Yes, Ollie, I am. The directions say I need blue soap, but I don't have any. Following directions is important. It's true. And God's directions are the best for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Follow me through, follow me through hell. I've got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, hi, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman, and I have a great story for you today about making choices. We all have choices to make, like, should I bring an umbrella with me today or should I not? It's a good thing I chose to bring this umbrella. Now, let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. Today's true story from the Bible begins with a man named Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the king of a place called Egypt, and he did very mean things to God's people, the Israelites. Pharaoh made them do very hard work for us very, very, very long time without paying them. And Pharaoh wouldn't let them leave. Can you give Pharaoh a thumbs down like this? Now say, that's not good. That's not good. God saw that his people needed help. So he sent a man named Moses to lead them to a better place to live. God used Moses to make Pharaoh let his people go. Everyone say, hooray, hooray. So Moses led the people out of Egypt, away from Pharaoh and into the desert. While they were in the desert, God told Moses to tell all of his people to go camp near the Red Sea. They didn't understand why God would send them that way. 
Now they have a choice to make. Will Moses and God's people go God's way or their own way? What should they do? Okay, let's see. Yay, they went God's way. Good choice. While they were camping, they looked up and saw Pharaoh and his army coming towards them. Oh no, what are Moses and God's people going to do? Moses told God's people, trust God and don't be afraid. God knows what is best for us. God will make a way. Then God told Moses to stretch out his staff over the sea. So Moses did what God said. And look what is happening. The sea is parting and making a dry path for them to walk on. God made a way for his people. After they walked safely to the other side, God closed the waters and kept Moses and his people safe from Pharaoh and his army. That was amazing. Moses and God's people trusted that God knew what was best for them. And we can trust that God knows what's best for us too. Oh, hey, Ollie, tell me, who knows what's best for you? God knows what's best for me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who knows what's best for you? God knows what's best for me. That's the truth, friends. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God knows what's best for me and for you. Thanks, Holly. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, God knew what was best for the people in our story, and God knows what's best for us too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Let's see if following the directions make the science experiment work. Yes, it worked. I can't wait to tell my friends about it. See you next time. Bye. John 3.20 God knows everything. 1 John 
Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about friendship. While we take a look at the story of someone who was not only a great friend, but also a great musician. Maestro, play us in. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Wabba wabba wabba. I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. Sebastian, what's taking so long? Just a minute. Today, we're talking about friendship, which is using your words and actions to show others you care. You okay? No worries. Normally, Sebastian and I would be out here together, but Sebastian promised he was putting together something really awesome and fun. Working on it. Just like how he promised he'd be out here to help me host. Sebastian, you better not be goofing off. I would never. How did that get back there? Sebastian. <sighs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. Ta-da! Sebastian has promised something awesome. Sebastian has delivered. That's your awesome surprise? It no, this is phase one of my awesome surprise, the cart of mystery. It's mysterious, all right, but what is it? Yes. Is it something I can eat? No. Is it something scientific? There may be some science involved. <gasps> is it the Large Hadron Collider? The world's largest particle accelerator? I suppose that wouldn't fit underneath it. J just tell me what the surprise is. <sighs> That's it? I know, it doesn't look like much, but we gotta put it together first. Okay then, let's, let's make, make it. it! Assembly station's ready. Did you read the instructions? I gotta say, this does look kinda cool. Great, let's get started. First up, supplies. If you're following along at home, you're going to need two craft sticks, a wide rubber band, two smaller rubber bands, a straw, and a pair of scissors. Step one, use the scissors to cut two pieces of a straw that are about an inch and a half long. Step two, stretch the thick rubber band around one of the craft sticks. Step three, place your second craft stick on top and attach it to the first one with a small rubber band. Make sure it's on the same end as the straw. Secure the second straw with another small rubber band. And there you have it. You are now a proud owner of your very own harmonica. <laughs> to play, all you have to do is just move the straw up and down to adjust the pitch. Slide the straw to play higher or lower. Moving the straw pieces closer together causes the rubber band to vibrate at a higher frequency, which is what causes a higher note. It kind of sounds like a kazoo. But wait, there's more. Because why not stop at one awesome instrument when you can have your very own buildable band? I mean, we've got everything here. Like, we've got a shaker made from soda bottle with popcorn in it. I mean, we got a box guitar, tin can drum set. Ready to rock? You know it. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> You promised something awesome and fun, and you did not disappoint. I always keep my promises, <laughs> mostly. But speaking of promises, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the books of First and Second Samuel, which tell the story of David, who was called a man after God's own heart. While David was still a boy, God chose a man named Saul to rule over Israel. But Saul didn't listen to God. So... God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David as a sign that he would one day be king of Israel. Though David started out as a shepherd, he caught Saul's attention when he faced down a huge giant. After that, King Saul appointed David as both the leader of his armies and his personal musician. 
God blessed David and he won many battles. The people loved him. David even became best friends with Saul's son, Jonathan. But the people loved David so much that Saul became jealous. He wanted to get rid of David. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. Hi. Today, we have a thrilling tale of friendship and promises. Promises broken and promises kept. As David grew in popularity, King Saul became so jealous that he gave orders for David to be killed. As David's best friend, Jonathan ran to warn David. My father is looking for a chance to kill you. Find a place to hide in the field. My father and I will come and stand there. I'll speak to him about you and then I'll tell you what I find out. Jonathan begged his father not to hurt David. Please, don't do anything to harm David. He hasn't done anything to harm you, and what he's done has helped you a lot. Saul listened to Jonathan and promised... You can be sure that David will not be put to death. Jonathan told David, so David returned to the palace. But Saul didn't keep his promise. One night... Saul's jealousy of David became so great that he picked up a spear and hurled it at David. Soon after, David went to find Jonathan. What have I done? What is my crime that your father's trying to kill me? Never! My, my father wouldn't kill you, he promised. I'm telling you the truth. Look, tomorrow's the new moon feast. Talk to your father while I hide in the field. If he's not trying to kill me, come and tell me. But if he is... I'll let you know. I promise. But in return, please, always be kind to me as long as I live. And never stop being kind to my family. I promise. Jonathan kept his promise. He returned to his father and discovered that Saul really did want to kill David. And the moment he found out, he warned his friend so David could flee far away. Years passed. David escaped Saul again and again until one day, Saul and Jonathan were both killed during a battle. David was heartbroken over the death of his best friend. He mourned for days, but eventually, David was made king in Saul's place. When David was king, he remembered the promise he made to take care of Jonathan's family. My friend Jonathan is gone. Is there anyone still left of his household? God has been very kind to me, and I would like to be kind to that person as well. Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, is still alive. He's unable to walk because of an injury he received as a child. Bring him here, so I can keep my promise to Jonathan and show him the Lord's kindness. David had Mephibosheth brought to the palace and welcomed him with open arms. Who am I that you should pay attention to me? Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And I'll always provide whatever you need. Some people looked down on Mephibosheth because he couldn't walk. But David made Mephibosheth a permanent member of his royal household, keeping the promise he made to his friend Jonathan all those years before. The end. Okay. That was pretty epic. I know, right? So, what's our part in the story? Well, to start with, we can remember how God has always kept promises to us. God promised to send us a savior and then followed through by sending Jesus. And just as Jonathan and David kept their promises to each other, we can make sure to keep our promises to our friends as well. Keeping your promises helps build trust between you and your friends. It can help friendships grow. Right, like say you borrow a toy or a game from a friend and promise to give it back the next day. Make sure you don't accidentally leave it at home. Speaking of, here's the pen you lent me. Thanks. Or say you promise to let your friend pick the next game when you guys play together. Even if you really don't like the game your friend chooses, it's important to keep your promise and give him a turn. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye. Bye.
So here's the thing. Friends keep their promises. Can I promise you a musical outro? <laughs> How about we just sing something instead? Yes! <laughs> so long, farewell, off we just say goodnight. goodnight. We hate to go, but, but that's our show, all right. And now it's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks Thank for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next time. time.